Like many individuals, I start my day with a forecast, not just because it's my passion, it's also my responsibility. I'm the lead air quality forecaster for the Division of Air Quality. Myself, along with my two co co-workers, Christy Weber and Shauna Ward, issued a forecast twice a day, every day, 365 days a year. Um, every morning at 8 a.m., or approximately at 8 a.m., we like to get our morning forecast out. Our evening forecast is by 8 p.m. Now we do that because we need to know how high we are getting in the evening before we can issue what we expect for the next day. This has improved our accuracy for our two-day forecast. The first thing I check every morning is our air monitoring readings from our air monitoring equipment across the state. I want to see where were the highs last night after I went to bed. The second thing I'm looking at is are the air monitoring readings from the National Weather Service. I need to know where the highs and lows were located. What were the temperatures for the day before? How high did we get? How did we get clouds? Did we get rain? One of the third things I look at are the satellite information. I'm looking at the visible the visible infrared and the water vapor satellite images in order to know what are my cloud thicknesses, my cloud densities, my cloud heights and temperatures, and my, where are my clouds likely to be located from the water vapor chart. Um, these will also sometimes tell me where a front is located, where smoke is located, and possibly where blowing dust is located, though very rarely. Now this summer we've had a high incidence of wildfire smoke. Um, a lot of people have heard about the Brinehead fire that was burning in southern Utah. One of the biggest questions I was asked is, is that smoke going to come to the Wasatch Front? The hazardous mapping fire and smoke projection model is a model that is use, uses satellite information from NASA. Uh, it uses the VIRS and the MODA satellite to take a temperature reading for potential hot spots. From that, it will mark it on the map and it will estimate if there was a possibility of a wildfire. And additionally, using those satellite images, it will also guess for where the pollution or the smoke will emit. That's not 100% accurate, but it's a great indicator when I walk in in the morning and all of a sudden my particulate numbers are through the roof and I don't know where it's from. One of the last things I do look at are the meteorological forecasts. Um, so I know, I know what's going on now, but I need to know what's happening in the future. So that's what these National Weather Service meteorological forecasts are great for. Um, I, there are several out there. The NAM, the GFS, are two of the big ones. And when they agree, I know it's good. When they don't, that's when the art comes in. I know the GFS is better for a couple of things, the NAM is better for a couple of other things. So I'm looking for where the front's located, where the high is going to be, how the high is going to move. This summer, our ozone has been relatively elevated because we've had stagnant highs and has allowed the precursors for ozone to build up over time and we're not getting any fronts to clean it out. Very similar to the inversions that we have in the for long periods of time in the winter but not quite as severe. So I'm looking at what are the temperatures over the next week? What are the winds over the next week? Where are they blowing? Are they going north? Are they going south? Are we going to get any rain? Are we going to get any lows? These are all really important for when I'm looking at day two and day three and looking ahead to the future. So once I've looked at all these and any other indicators I have, I get together with my colleagues and we come to a consensus on the forecast. One of the last things I'm asked by a lot of individuals is where do I find the forecast? Our forecast is available on the Division of Air Quality website. Um, if you go to our homepage under forecast, there's a little button you can click. That'll give you the three-day forecast. There, all the counties that we forecast for are listed along the top. Click on your county, you'll get the three-day forecast. If you're interested in the current conditions, from that tab you can also hit the current conditions. That'll get you what's our most recent um, reading off of our monitor. Additionally, it'll, you can also get a trend chart. That's the five most recent days that came off of this monitor. Now these are non-quality assured and occasionally our monitors do hiccup and this is a raw feed. So do, do know that when you're looking at these numbers. An additional location, we do have the Utah Air app. It's available on Android and iOS. If you have any more questions, hey, my email is available on the website, let me know.